It's a daily talk show, episode three hundred and twenty. What did we do? Three twenty-eight, and we've got our mate Oscar Gordon in the house. Lovely to be here. What's happening? I say Oscar's my mate, but I didn't even know that he actually lived in Melbourne. Not a lot of people do. Yeah. What's mate, <laughs> Josh is just panicked with the uh, your mic technique. Uh, that's oh, okay. sorry. I'm uh, not okay. normally on the microphone, but well, how's that? Is that really uh, good? good? I'm so impressed by your graphics at the start of the podcast, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we can thank uh, Marty Sharp. Marty Sharp for putting that together. He's a motion graphics guy who moved to LA. He does like Ellen DeGeneres's. But for all we back. know, he may be back living in Melbourne. Yeah, if exactly. it goes by Josh's yeah. knowledge well, of where people are living. Well, because you spend how much of the time in Canada a year? So I work uh, for a ski resort called Silver Star in Canada. And so their winter starts, uh, you know, middle of November and goes till about April. Yeah. And I was there in December and then I went back just recently for three weeks. So when it's winter, I'll head back over there and I'm lucky to sort of do both. And now based in Melbourne because I haven't lived here for a long time, but I'm from here originally. Mm. Yeah. So um, our connection, uh, you know, our, um, our mums lived in London together. I didn't know that. Didn't you know that? No. And um, your mum and my mum went to Austria and my mum came home with a broken leg. Oh, really? I think she broke her ankle. But Joan was there. And Oscar's mum also married Amy and I. Mm. There you go. So so is she a full-time wedding celebrant or is that just a side hustle? She is now, yeah. Yeah. But for many years she was doing it as a side hustle while she was working as a teacher. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it's so weird, my mum. She's got all these sort of weird things that she does on the side. One time she actually came over and visited me in Canada and it was summer there and I was looking at my phone, like through my phone and I saw a screenshot of her in the millionaire hot seat. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? And she goes, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you I was on millionaire. I'm like, what do you mean you forgot to tell me? <laughs> did How she- did you forget to say that you were on with Eddie? And so she went, oh, I can tell, I'll tell you why, because she only won a thousand bucks, which, hey, it's not too bad. I wonder how that, do you know how the money actually gets to her? Does it, do they write out checks? No, no. Does anyone do that anymore? I don't know. I just remember, do you like Eddie, like when it would get to the, cl- like when it was the, who wants to be? Oh, yeah, there. yeah. I think that was all just part of the, th- who yeah, are, yeah. you know, just like write the check, slide it across the table. Your answer oh, will get yeah, you yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. That. yeah it's theatrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. It's, so, they, they so it's all pay pass now, just a square <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> Interesting. No, well, I did, I, the reason that I did know that you spent some time in Melbourne was because I was living at my parents' place for a while and they're big viewers of a current affair (laughs) yeah Uh, and so uh i was very chuffed when i saw you not only on a current affair but uh there was reenactments involved (laughs) there was a point where you were even uh using some form of foil as a uh as what's that called when you do that reflective reflective. i think we need to preface that it was the best possible appearance on that show because you you weren't (laughs) The aggressor yeah. or you were... Yeah, I wasn't being tracked down in the corner. middle of the street. No, not yeah. yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what happened was I was walking home. I got home and I'm walking past my bedroom window, my bedroom, look out and I see the window has got a, a brick fence like right, like being built over it. So next door, when we moved in, they were building a house completely fine and then it got to the stage where they're building it against my brick wall. And I'm talking like there's, like, you know, like one millimetre difference between the brick wall and my bedroom window, which is the only source of light so they had built it completely covered it because they were building next door they had planned permits all fine but i was trying to get in touch with my uh, real estate agent and get them to try and put together some sort of a skylight they didn't it took forever it was like a week it ended up being two months with no light at all in my in my room which is a weird thing after a while i mean if you're doing night shift it's okay but (laughs) you weren't if you're eternally hung over it's fine (laughs) um but yeah so i just um i thought stuff and i'm just gonna put it up on social and (laughs) it just like everyone was like what the hell are you doing living in a in a room with no window so and then next minute a current affair and i thought stuff and i will do it because that nothing had happened i had no where one to turn to except for tracy i mean there's only two people i mean i've just never done a reenactment josh has done (laughs) reenactments on the news before Channel Nine. What yeah. I've always wondered is seeing that, like, and I know you, and I know you kind of. Ta- you, what I could see is you taking a bit of the piss. Well, do you know what? Because I just thought when they because they they come over, it was first thing in the morning, and they went, want to do the interview straight away. And because you know we we sort of understand what they're after. Yeah. I just said to them, oh, you know, can we just with this? I just don't want to make it like poor me, poor me, because you know, privileged white male, you yeah. know, complaining about not getting any light when people are dying out there and so, oh, you know, you know, they can't afford their bills and stuff. On the grand scheme of things, it's not that full on. So I said, we, we should, it should be a bit light. But having said that, 
I was like, you know, what what do you want me to sort of yeah. talk about? Anyway, so we did the piece of the camera and then they said, oh, can we do some cutaways? And I said, yeah, no, that's fine. They said, can we do a bit of an interview with you in your bed? And so there's me <laughs> propped up in the bed with the current affair lady. And then uh, they said, oh, come outside. So I went outside and I was just sitting down and this, one of the producers just passed me a tray with alfoil on it. <laughs> and they said, and they literally just started, I didn't even have time to realise what, what the whole purpose was. And they said, so Oscar, what have you got here? And I just went, I'd, I'd do anything just to get a little bit of life. <laughs> and it I, was it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> but it was, I, I think it was the first time the current affair almost did a parody on themselves. I like, know. Fuck, I gave you too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Oscar, yeah. 100%. Content mind. Yeah. Content mind, one of the best content minds in Australia done yeah. viral videos he knows what to do to uh, get those views what did your, what did your property manager because the, the issue that I would have is not being on a current affair it's then having to interact with the property manager being like yeah that was me yeah I yeah yeah well no I told him I said hey this is going to happen can we get some sort of a, a fix on it because I didn't, didn't yeah. want to I mean it's kind of embarrassing to have to do that but yeah. in the end it was all sort of you know funny and uh, they, yeah anyway let's just say since it's been aired I've got a big skylight in my room, which I can open up, although yeah. it's kind of annoying because you've got the stick there. So it's like, <laughs> oh, the rain's coming in. <laughs> so I'm not opening it up. But yes, it's very, it's automated. It's got a little shutter that comes down and up. So depending on how I feel, um, I, can, I can change the light. So I'm very privileged now. Yeah, um, I will say uh, that you. What my favourite part of the video was the expert that came in. <laughs> well, the wellness expert, I think it was pacing yeah. around like they, they, they <laughs> couldn't even get a sleep ex- expert. Couldn't get a scientist. They had a wellness. Doctor, no way. They had a wellness expert or something. <laughs> I was like, come on. Yeah, it's – um. I've now – like, you know when you type your name in and it sort of predict on Google and it predicts yeah. what it is? It just what is it? What did like, you type in? Oscar just Gordon. Say, so, yeah, right, yeah, Oscar Gordon. It used to be Oscar Gordon, Sophie Monks, friends with her. And then um, – but now it's like Oscar Gordon brick wall. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's my claim to fame. That's so embarrassing. And I'm, I'm not on – uh, social media anymore, but Tommy keeps me up to on the Instagram. I retired from my personal social media. Personal social. It was, why? Getting, too, it was getting too much. Just yeah. don't do it anymore. Yeah, no, well, that's why I did. I retired. I'm just relaxing. But do you you look through still? Well, no, I I stopped doing that because I realised I started hating all of my friends. Like, do you have moments <laughs> where you like? I actually like these people, but I think they're fuckwits online. And so I realised I'm like, you know, this is me. I need to take a break. I think if you're a fuckwit online, mm. then you're a fuckwit, a fuckwit <laughs> in general. Stop, I've yeah, got a lot of fuckwit should, friends. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to unfollow a lot of your friends. Um, it does get annoying after a while when you start seeing stuff, but mm. you, I just unfollow. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah you I unfo- so I, don't, I feel uncomfortable with the, I'll do like the hide before the unfollow because I just can't yeah. deal with the drama. Yeah. Oh, it depends who it is, to be yeah. honest. If you know you don't ever see them again, then I'll definitely unfollow. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've actually, uh, in 2011, someone unfriended me on Facebook. It was a cinematographer that I met once on a shoot <laughs> and he unfollowed unfriended me and so i've actually got an email that i sent him being like hey mate just wanting to know if you're okay it was quite full on so i've got sort of a bit of a dark past when it comes to unfriending and unfollowing so well do you know what there was this lady that i used to uh, work with um in radio she was one of the receptionists and every time i'd I'd go past i'd be like oh we had a great you know banter Mm -hmm. you know little office jokes here and there and and all that sort of stuff and i stupidly downloaded that app where you can see who's unfollowed you yeah she fucking unfollowed me and i was like what was it is there anything that i said when i walked past you at the reception (laughs) did i do anything like why can't you have this open and up you know um honest conversation with me and i just i was like fine i'll just unfollow you and I'd so never the, I never gave her as much love. There's two types of people, the people that actually say something to their face and the <laughs> ones that just a bit of passiveness behind their back, unfollow. <laughs> yeah. Was it was it Julie at, at Fox? Was it Jules? <laughs> <laughs> was that? No, it wasn't. Uh, She's okay. lovely. A- yeah, she A-R-N. Is, A-R-N. We don't follow each other. So um, you, uh, Oscar used to work on the Kyle and Jackie O show yes. in Sydney. And you actually, Josh took over from no, your no, he role? Replaced, way. Yeah. So Oscar replaced me. Oscar replaced um, Josh. I actually got a goodbye card uh, when I was leaving and Sam Cav had written, welcome to the team, Oscar, ex- exclamation mark, in my card and then had scribbled it out. <laughs> that's actually Which funny. is a, that's, a good bit of gear. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. a bit of gear from Sammy. But, um, yeah, no, so you were doing Fifi and Jules. Yeah. Was that when – was Sophie Monk uh, – looking after that spot or was it? Yeah, so I was working, before that I worked in comedy mm. for a comedy company. That's right. And then is it Token or something? Token, yeah. yeah. What did you do there? Online coordinator. Okay. Token something. is like next door. Is oh, that is a Token? It? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I th- yeah, they've moved. So mm. we, uh, th- yeah, then Jules was doing, oh yeah, that's right. So Fifi was having a first child, mm. Sophie Monk replaced mm. and then Jules calls me up and says, 
hey, um, can you do, you know, there's big songs about to drop. It's oh, Robin Thicke, yeah. Blurred Lines. Remember that song? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where you see, the, you remember the music video and in the background they've got Emma Ratatowski or, mm, yeah. and she's. Uh, I'm sure Mr. 97 could uh, pronounce her name. No, no chance. Oh, okay. <laughs> you shorten it to Rata. Oh, Rata, is that yeah. what you do with your right. mates? Yeah. Is that what you send each other? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Rata? You no, seen I'm pretty sure that's her name on Instagram. Anyway. Okay, mate. Well, she was, <laughs> sure. yeah, she was, she's famous for having sort of, uh, she was naked basically. Yeah, pretty she? much, yeah. yeah. And so you had uh, Robin Thicke there and like weird animal goats and stuff like that all against the wall. Anyway, so Jules wanted to do a parody of this song which just dropped and it was just about to get services. So we, they all knew it was going to be a big hit. He yeah. wanted to be, uh, you know, there first. And so he said, oh, mate, can I, can I get you to help me out? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll do it thinking that I was going to help produce it or direct it or something yeah. like that. I rock up to the sound stage and there's a billion people everywhere. And he's like, all right, mate. And he hands me a G string and oh expects no. me to wear just a G, a, a, a skin colored G string and prance around and then wear a mullet on the back of it. And so I'm actually in this, this blue line <laughs> you parody. Did you, did, you actually... I uh, did it. I thought, oh, I've got, you know... you got to lose. Yeah, is that, I've got nothing. Is that is that uh, not the first time Jules Lund's punked you like that? I'm sure. <laughs> no, yeah, well, it, so I think it was just a bit of a communication breakdown. But anyway, so I'm there. <laughs> was it? Oh, it definitely I'm, wasn't. No, Jules, like, it was very strategic. <laughs> yeah, it left out the banana hammock. <laughs> uh, so I'm, the, I'm there on stage holding a goat like that they just gi- given me and they're, you know, performing to the song or whatever. And then I look out the corner and there's Sophie Monk like enters and she's off st- stage and That's she's got right. a dart in her mouth and <laughs> she's, uh, a re- you know, got her, you know, makeup artist, her whole team around her. And I just thought, oh my God, what an LA se- sense in t- like entitled, <laughs> you know, woman. I thought, oh God, Sophie Monk, whatever. And then apparently the flip side to that is we've, so since then we've, we've become best friends and, mm-hmm. and you know, we, we do a lot of stuff together. She, her f- first impression of me was, oh my God, what is this try hard guy doing <laughs> in a, like a, a you know, G string holding a goat? Like, how much of an exhibitionist does this guy want to be? <laughs> so it was funny. We, we sort of both went into that way. Anyway, and then a couple of weeks later, yeah, I worked with yeah. um, Fifi and Jules for six months and then moved to Sydney. Yeah. So you were in charge of all the, the content. I feel like um, there's probably only one or two radio shows in Australia that have put a real emphasis on video, even mm-hmm. when radio stations are like, no, we need to focus on audio, which is silly. They should be focusing on an element of video. And Kyle and Jackie O was one of them. Mm. So you came on as the, what was it, the video producer? Executive digital producer was yeah. my title. A good, yeah. Um, because they asked me what title did I want and yeah. I just went with that because it sounded really good. You can get more cash that way too, I believe. <laughs> yes. exactly. Yeah. Did, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. they start, yeah, it's good. Definitely. It's true though, right? Like yeah. they always say, oh, it's got, don't worry about the title. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Fucking title when they're yeah. looking at how much they pay you and they're looking at the scales and all that sort of shit. It made it. Yeah, it totally. Make a difference. Yep. So I worked with them for two years in total and mm. then worked with you a bit. Uh, and yeah, so we were working out of Sydney and then I did a bit of stuff in Melbourne as well. And then you went to, over to um, Canada. So the, w- there's a guy in a podcast at the moment called Hamish McLaren and he's, he is uh, the arsehole of the podcast. He's the guy that was ripping everyone off. Is it's this like who's true, Hamish? Or it's called Who the Hell is Hamish? Okay. It's a true crime. It's like, you know, fits into that genre of a guy who's ripping off all these people. But he oh, actually yes, had, I heard he, this. He I had a... This. Um, and a, he had a house in Silver Lake. S- or Silver, Silver Star. Silver Star. Yeah, he the had a house resort, yeah. over at the ski resort. Did you hear about him at all? Uh, this was a while ago. I think it was in the 90s. But yes, apparently he scammed a lot of people around the area with a lot of money, pretending like he owned all these properties and boats and yeah. cars and whatever. And then I don't, yeah, I can't remember that. And then it turned into a podcast. And yeah, it started from this guy having uh, proclaiming to have all this money and wealth in uh, at Silverstone. Yeah, it's a good plug for the podcast, actually, <laughs> even though he hasn't seen it. But I just wanted to see if you'd seen, if you'd heard it, it yes, when you it were living came there. across and, yeah. Back. But so, so what you were doing over there, um, how, how did that job come about going over to Canada? So I was working with Kyle and Jack at the time and then I went on, on a holiday to Silverstar with Sophie and while I was there, I was getting her to um, take video, of, well, you know, to get, trying to get some great social media and we wanted to do that thing where you dive into the snow. Yeah. And so she's like, no, what... I, you know, the snow's like that big. Yeah. And she's like, no, if I jump in, I'm just going to go straight and fall straight, you know, through onto the ground. I said, no way. You know, I'm six foot six and a half. I'll start it. I said, you go over there. You got the camera. I might like, put the camera lower. I want to make it look really good. I put it on slow-mo so we can slow it down. Anyway, so I do a big jump into the snow and then I can't get out. Like my leg is, my knee's really hurting. And I, I was almost suffocating, to be honest. 
Sophie is pissing herself <laughs> laughing, thinking I'm just playing up for the camera. It's a bit of a joke. And I can't even get myself out of there. Anyway, long story short, I, uh, I did my knee and I couldn't move and I couldn't do anything. I had to stay there longer to let it heal a little bit to then go and fly back to Australia and get it get it fixed. But while I was there, they offered me a job and, and <laughs> I and, and, and I was like, you know what, I'd, I probably I don't want to leave. So did, did you have travel insurance? Yeah. Um, no, I probably didn't. Oh, no. no, I did. I definitely didn't. You did? You no, did. I didn't. So it was like $1,000 to see a doctor. Uh-huh. That's Shit. A thousand bucks doesn't but seem too bad. I got a job out of the end. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you got full time employment from doing your knee. Were you mm. uh, were you actually on annual leave when you were there? Like, did you have to make any calls to bosses and be like, "Hey guys, I fucked my knee. I'm going to be an extra few weeks." Um, yeah. Well, we were sort of negotiating what we're going to do anyway. Oh, so it's sort of, I think yeah. that's right. I bumped into you in Sydney, um, and it was just at that time where you were working out whether you get out of the radio. radio yeah, because you sort of get to. a because you both left radio, mm. you both know it's like I've all you know. I started doing community radio when I was re- really young, loved it, still love it, and you you go in there and it's you can't even describe the sort of environment that it is, but it's very full on and you're constantly, you know, tasked with creating as many ideas as possible. And I was really driven to do the best that I possibly can. And I think you just get to the stage where you naturally burn out. And for me, mm. uh, yeah, and that coupled with the hours and uh, and an opportunity to. To, you know, I felt like I'd done that and it was good to sort of go into a different area and, and look at budgets and, you know, different sales and money and business and all yeah. that sort of stuff. I feel like you're an example of someone who has things happen to them or it's like people on social media, there's certain friends that they have, they just have things that are content worthy and straight after the current affair thing, your car was oh stolen. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and so, how, which is gold. Like I've had a few things. I've had a fire at a, my apartment. I've had like a, oh, someone ram, ram raid across the road. So I saw I, that, yeah. Yes, good things happen to me as well. Yeah, but, so, <laughs> but not to the other people around exactly. you. Yeah. yeah. So what? What? Uh, how the fuck did someone steal your car? So I know this thing happened on like my work. <laughs> recognise I'm a, I'm a liability, but they're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. So I walk out and I'm like, oh, where's my car? And I thought, Where, what did I do last night? Who did I give it this to? Is in Where Melbourne? did I leave it? This is in Melbourne and mm. Richmond. How much did I drink? Yeah, but I didn't that night and I was so proud of myself for that. And then <laughs> I was proud because I was like, no, I, I left it here and, and I'm trying to like, I thought I was losing my mind. Anyway, it got stolen and I had to make the call to my work to say, Hey guys, um, the car's been stolen, and they were like, "Oh, they thought that was funny." Yeah. Like, oh, it's typical Oscar. And this typical is in—is this your bosses in Canada? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. And is the time difference meant that they thought that it was just after New Year's, but it was actually because of the time difference is actually two days after. So they thought I had a massive New Year's. Yeah. Yeah. I've lost the car, and uh, but the fact that they were okay with it shows how cool they are. Is as that people. the first call you make to the boss? I'd probably would you call the? I called the police. Yeah, you thought about calling the police first, or no, well, you oh, did? The, you called the police first, did you, or no? Uh, Caught his boss. I, probably, I can't remember. I, I was like, the police, are, what are they, it's not like a murder. Yeah. You yeah. definitely I, didn't I, I have insurance. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I had insurance. I had insurance. Oh, yeah, and yeah. So on the side of the car is a big decal of the business. Yeah, which says like in big branding, Silver Star, Skier. Like it's a big part of the bit. You know, yeah. it's yeah. not, it's, it's a very loud looking car. Mm. Like when you drive around it, you get a lot of looks while I've, you're driving. I've it. spotted it a couple oh, of really? times. So that's how much a decal actually has impact. Yeah. It's like stealing a Domino's car or something, you know, like yeah. a delivery. <laughs> Your little scooter. <laughs> well, there's more of them. You blend in. So this is pretty unique. A ski resort in Canada, a car in in Australia, in Melbourne. That's a good. Yeah. Ge- that's a. You've you've done pretty well there yeah. managing very a car. Lucky. It's, it's yeah. But anyway, <laughs> you're fucking yeah. lost very lucky, it. but you're I lost, lost it. it. Like you know, <laughs> ridiculous. And so I knew I couldn't call on a current affair yet because I've done that. <laughs> and then so have I you got Tracy's myself, number? <laughs> 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 I had a favour, Trace. Um, so I w- that, that wasn't a possibility. And then I just, it'd been a couple of days. The police, to be honest, they're all obviously awesome people. Mm. But with, I think, cars, particularly in that area, things get stolen all the time. They just don't have the resource to be able to churn through it. Mm. I tell you and what, it also is bad. Fraud cases, if you have to report one of those. Yeah. Like you've got to fill out this lengthy paper, paperwork. and you What sort of fraud? What do you, what do you mean? Oh, even suggesting I might have. <laughs> no, no, no. The guys next door, they had uh, someone try and um, buy a, product through oh, them right. that was like you know ten thousand yeah. dollars they'd already paid for the order but it was a false order and so they went in to report uh, this yeah it was like look especially gonna, yeah like digital sort of crime and stuff and identity theft. it's fucking hard that's why it's always good using your credit card rather than using uh, like an fpos card like if you you know how fpos cards has like the visa mm. option or yeah, something yeah. so much harder to get your your money back than it is the credit card 
companies. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, so the, the car. The car how is there, it's stolen, and a police, a little bit of, it, not much is happening. We're, we're, we're insurance is happening at this stage. Mm. A couple of days pass. I've actually gone off on holiday. Um, <laughs> uh, on, on, on the Yarra, uh, where is it? The Murray River, that's right. I was in a Chica and for a couple of days. The Yarra River would be a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> it depends where you're from. <laughs> anyway, so I, uh, I thought, oh, do I post it on social media? I thought, oh, just look like I can't get my shit together. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, I've got nothing else to lose. I might as well do it for a little bit of promotion, if anything. Yeah. And and, yeah. and hopefully, maybe it, it kind of comes up. So take a photo. I'm like, mm. car stolen, blah, 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 blah. These are the details. My cousin, younger cousin, Louis, calls me a couple of days later and he goes, hey, mate, did you find your car? And I said, no. And he goes, oh, because I think I know where it is. It's that he was walking along somewhere in South Melbourne on his way to work. And so he's... Because I've moved around a lot, he doesn't have my mobile number. We're talking through uh, Facebook chat, mm. Messenger or whatever. Yeah. He's been questioned by the police at this stage because he called the police to say, hey, I found it, if you just mm. want to collect it or whatever. Yeah. And then suddenly they said, well, how did you find it? How do you know Oscar? And he's like, oh, I'm cousins with Oscar. Oh, okay, well, where does he live? He couldn't like, oh, no. know the answer. Oh. And they said, oh, okay, well, do you have his mobile number? And he didn't have that. <laughs> so suddenly it turned on, the poor thing, he's found my car <laughs> and they think that he's stolen it. But anyway. He's suspect number one. Got the car back. Uh, at, so weird. We, there was a, a bike tire that was in the back of it. So weird, and, and lots of dusting from the police. That is one thing. The police should do the wipe down. I, I've had my yeah. car fingerprinted. Someone jumped on my front window, and I came out. And I was, all I see is dust everywhere. It's like chalk or whatever it is yeah. to find the fingerprints to lift the. Like you see in the film, the movies, yeah. But it's, the car was just filthy, so I had this smash windscreen. I need to go to the servo, mm. but I need to have the window changed before I did that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Shit was everywhere. That's so annoying. Are you okay? You're I'm, be okay. Right? I'm okay. I'm <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a, it's a um, tough one. Wait, so do you just take it? Do you just like take the car back and start using it, or does the like, what what happens at that yeah, point? Just take really the then car. You've got Did it. Did you sniff the seats or something? Like make sure. Not a big <laughs> seat sniffer. <laughs> no. um, There's the headline of today's <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so there was a tire, a tire in there, and you like. There's a tire and a bandana, and that's all we had. Really? Honestly, a bandana and, and another set of keys, which actually had an address on it for some place in South Yarra. So you went so stole their car. <laughs> so I thought, fuck this. No, and um, karma. So I, I t- told the police anyway; they were unable to follow up because hey, it could have been a lead for something else. But I think they probably got a, a bit on at the moment. So what did you do with the keys? Actually, there's still my house. Anyone in <laughs> anyone in Marne Street in South Yarra, I've got your keys. It's, it's crazy, isn't it's it? Bizarre. Like even when I filmed the Ram Raid on Smith Street, I said to the cops, I'm like, hey, guys, do you want the footage? They're mm. like, it's like they don't have any computers with USBs. Mm. <laughs> they don't know how to fucking take it. They're like, yeah. don't know how to accept it's the footage. Not quite like you'd think on yeah. that. Yeah. Not to mention the NBN again, but they've spent a fuckload on that. I mean, that's not the police's fault, but I understand no, what you're saying. No, but the money, <laughs> resources from the government. <laughs> yeah. To, it, the, you know, public servants. Yeah. That's how they're being funded. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's so well, there could be a bit of money taken from that fucking stupid NBN. Anyway. I think Tommy's just upset about the NBN. Yeah, yeah wow. This is suddenly well, well, shit's getting real over well, here. Well, the reason he brings it up is because we actually just uh, got installed at our new office because we can't get the NBN but there's services there's Uh internet service providers now that will spit like high speed internet like 100 Mm. megabits through the air like point to point it's like, yeah. Well, because like, I, I I'm going to say I don't really know a lot about that side mm. of things, but I want fast internet for some fucking reason in my house. I cannot get it. Well, yeah, no, no, it's because the NBN is shit. Yeah, and but wh- you know what? Like, even like <laughs> when it happened, when they announced this big NBN rollout, mm. I thought to myself, I reckon if we wait a couple of years, we, it, the wireless thing is going to be okay. Mm. We're going to be able to do yeah. it without having to, anyway, no I, expert. I mean, you've, you've definitely felt the pain of working at these big radio stations where the internet was subpar. Oh, uploading large video files. Mm-hmm. But that is, that is what that your job entailed. Yeah. Uploading, yeah, yeah, dealing yeah. Just that. <laughs> just uploading. Senior executive yeah. uploader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got paid a lot though. What is the, uh, being in Canada, Yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that the Canadians have right that Australia needs to adopt in regards to life? Um, they are really just chilled out people. Mm, They're really, really friendly. Um, they are also... The marijuana's legal there. Really? It's really weird because it's so legal there. Every It's just not an issue. And yeah. here you look at it like in the news and stuff or politicians answering questions about whether or not we'd even potentially go down that path and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. But yeah. it, the world hasn't stopped in Canada or yeah. wherever else it's legal. So it's interesting that, I and think. So, and how, what are you seeing happen? Like, do you notice it when you go over there? 
Just uh, no, not at all. Plume of smoke. <laughs> you don't just see people, yeah, just with burgers or whatever. Just I just no. I do wonder, like uh, marijuana, like if it was legal. I wonder, like I wonder mm. if I would still be like whether I would be someone who would do it. Do you find that like I could be maybe like a you know, the oil that everyone's talking about CBD. that's meant to calm you down? Yeah, right? so it doesn't sort of have thing. the psychoactive yeah. elements of marijuana. I think it is. So I it's like, like that stuff would be good. But I, I get asthma, so I don't know about the whole. <laughs> like, to give you asthma. But the cookie, like, what's the like? Uh, is it very common to like? Is that an, is that edibles? Is that what that is, or is that uh, edibles different, different to it, cookies? No, edibles that are, is are a cookie. cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah cookies yeah, so. are edible. Yeah. Mm. So and so was that a common thing? Like if you go to a... Like I think a I think they had specialised places that you just don't see or hear. Mm. It's mm. not like you walk into a Woolworths and you've got your edible section over there yeah. and you've got yeah. Yeah, yeah pure marijuana strands over there, uh, yeah. Yeah, whatever it but, is, yeah. But you go to um, like Coles or Woolworths in New Zealand and there's just in the main supermarket an aisle with beer and alcohol, hard liquor. So it's like integrated into the actual. That's like shop Aldi, itself. though, isn't it? Oh, I guess that they're, they're doing some wine yeah. now. Miss No Seven, do they have? He's, he's the only alcohol one. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. got wine. Yeah, yeah. You get a little bottle. Uh, Mum does. Mum does. <laughs> <laughs> a little cheat number. You got a got a suggestion of what what brand? Well, I think that's Savion Blanc. Savion Blanc. He's that's good. A, that is good. I feel like that's coming back. <laughs> is it a sav- I don't know. I just feel like if I just say something like that, that people might think, "Oh yeah, he knows his wines." <laughs> and so, what do you what do you actually do day to day when you're in Canada in sort of and that not mode? doing ACA stories or finding your car that was stolen? <laughs> yeah, getting my shit together. Uh, so I spend the whole year trying to get my shit together. Then I go over to Canada. No, so in Canada, I'll, it, it's. Depends. Every day is different. Mm. That's what they used to always say in radio. Every day is different. It's like, That's oh, a way it's of code of saying I don't fucking do anything as well. <laughs> <laughs> like freelancers. Oh, every day is different. Every day is different. Every day is different. You don't new have adventure. any clients, do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so there, it'll depend on you – know, because I love doing content every now and again. Mm-hmm. And so my, my role is um, to get as many Australians and New Zealands over to Silver Star. The problem with Silver Star is – we actually book out at the peak periods when we want to go away on holidays. Sure. Yeah. So it's about, you know, you know, showing reasons why you should go uh, through the other times. And to be honest with you, it's the weather's better the later you go. So anyway, that's just a side note. So when I'm over there, I might do – like we did this thing where we wanted to raise – with two things we wanted to talk about Silver Star, the fact that it's open, it's mm. we've got a lot of snow, but we also wanted to talk about uh, the ski school that we've got there and the, and the Rippers program. Um, so young kids go there, they learn how to ski, they have a good time, it leaves mum and dad the ability to be able to go off and do whatever they want to do. Um, and so what I'm obsessed with is puppies yeah. and <laughs> dogs and particularly these particular dogs over there called um, Bernese Mountain Dogs. They look like the Beethoven ones but oh, they're cool. almost cuter. Yeah. My, my mate had two in Australia. Oh, Cruel. Yeah. They're big, big, big things. <laughs> Ginormous. <laughs> studio apartment. Or <laughs> no, it was a mansion in Brighton. Okay, great. Oh, but it, it, was, it was enough. But they're huge and furry. Yeah. They're and I managed, I kept in touch with this one lady who is a breeder over in Canada for a year. And the dates just w- hap- so happened that she had about six or eight little puppies that had never been on snow before. Mm. And she was about to give them away in two days' time. And the Rippers were well, the first time they were about to go on snow as well. So it was these puppies and these little kids' first time that Jeez. went on snow. And I was like, puppies, snow. I think we've got something here. And uh, we, it was the cutest thing to film. And we put it up and it went viral, about one million plus, and then went all uh, the national news in Canada, which is w- always good. Which is for a, it's for a snow resort. Like that's yeah. – I think there's the you know the radio websites that are sort of primed to go viral. Not taking away from you making viral videos at the radio station because you made shitloads of them. Mm. But you were also working with amazing talent. Like that's amazing having yeah, that's a video for yeah. a page that's who's going to that. Like a few. Yes, exactly like, right. It managed to get the people that love snow. People have got kids, but it also worked with dog love. You know, it just sort yeah. of tick- and that's the the greatest feeling is when you're able to do that yeah you know and a lot of the times i've been fortunate to work with lots of celebrities in australia overseas put together video content and you go oh yeah the video with selena gomez is gonna do well Mm. because Mm. she's got the most amount of followers on instagram so you're gonna be okay there or so sometimes the idea might be undershadowed by you know those sorts of numbers but then there are other examples where you know you can see that it might be just a combining factor but one of the proudest videos i did was actually with sophie we, uh, she was over at Silver Star with her ex uh, partner, um, and she, this they is the Bachelor, the, the yeah, one. Yeah, yep. So yep. Sophie Monk was for our international viewers. 
that she was on The Bachelorette. She was The Bachelorette. Yeah, yeah, first celebrity Bachelorette, I suppose. And then she um, fell in love with Stu. Oh, I forgot that it's not all celebrity. Do they just do celebrities now or is it on and off celebrity? Uh, no, they did Sophie and then I think they saw that it worked and they got Honey Badger. And That's right. I don't, is that a celebrity? Like it, yeah, he was a rugby famous, player. Yeah, famous yeah, yeah, rugby player. Yeah. Okay. So they, they went with Soph, sure bet, to find some entertainment. And she found Stu. And so she was over in Silver, yeah, they were over. Yeah, they, they just finished filming. They came over, which worked well for me as well because I was going over. I had to spend the winter there. So they had a really good time there. But then, you know, um, uh, they went <laughs> separate ways. And so a lot of the time was spent with me you and You mean on reality show that wasn't real love? The, the best dating. They they're not together forever? Yeah, yeah no. but you know, it's so funny. Did it feel real? Do you, do you think like, as it, like oh, yeah, in that yeah, perspective, yeah. it's like it's... You it was the weirdest thing because you've got... I was in Canada at the time. So has gone on the show. It's gone mental at the time. Mm. It was just everywhere. I think at one stage on every single front cover is her face. Yeah. And the ratings were there. and it, But it was really nice being away from it all because yeah. it meant that, you know, I could just sort of see it from afar. I checked in with her every now and again. And then... I found it bizarre when I came back to Australia. Everyone was talking about, oh, yeah, what's in the contract that you have to be with this person and all this sort of stuff that was not true. But mm. I can understand having been in a situation where you're a watcher of these shows, mm. you know, and, and you're naturally going, oh, is it really legit what's happening there? But, yeah, it was all legit. And, um, yeah, so they they broke up. And one of the ways that Soph, uh, I suppose, spent her time focusing on, you know, um, not – the breakup was in creating this idea that uh, we had to put together a recruitment video for the staff at Silver Star. So it was – that was as, as planned as it came and it was how do you make that interesting? So yeah. we – spent about three days writing and most of it to be honest with you majority was Sophie's ideas and she's so creative and and just thinking of different scenes to interject and anyway we put the video together it was a big thing we put it online uh, it had you know million plus and again went uh, viral on all the news channels and stuff like it that. it was amazing there, it was like was that cool. one shot idea yeah. of like you know all these different things happening and feel free to put it on the overlay if you want to oh, yeah. we don't do overlay yet that's in the new studio oh, we okay. will link to it in the show notes the, yeah, we'll, we'll link to the video yeah. on the show notes. Oh, yeah, it was so impressive mm. and i remember seeing it on news websites and crazy yeah, that was, was cool like, because it was sophie wasn't in it yeah I, uh, oh really you know, there was no oh, yeah yeah that, and that was the nice thing it was sophie's not in it we've got the people who are actually genuine workers yeah. there yeah and it was really nice because it showed how much the Silver Star staff would care for their guests and do anything. And to be honest with you, most of them are Aussies. So it's a really nice, yeah. you know, family fun sort of place to go to. And then on top of that, yeah, it was just, they had a lot of fun. We actually, it was very organic sometimes. Like someone said, oh, you know, we've got these stunt people who have been working on this new film, blah, blah, blah. They're along here and, and they're here and they're happy to do some work. And so we were like, this is brilliant. We got mm. them on a skidoo um, snowmobile and got them to do jumps and flips and all that sort Amazing. of stuff. That's so, so cool. It's pretty cool. What the, do you, with the, um, you're on both sides in some ways where it's like you are working for a brand, but you've also seen Sophie with the influence influencer side of things how do you see it from a brand perspective of having people stay at resorts and things like that what's the what's the metrics that you're looking at in that regard it depends on who they are and, and can we get free pass <laughs> yeah the daily talk show ob we'll do an ob live five days a, five days a week I'll, I'll, I'll you can you can ski free Oh, great. Yeah, I'll give you a ski free pass. Oh, yeah, oh sure. perfect. Can you Mr. 97 ski free as well? You can as well. His yeah, bosses perfect. are watching right now going, <laughs> Oscar's a loose cannon. <laughs> He's just offering dish in Australia. Yeah. Liability. Lost, lost our car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give you a free car. Uh, yeah, so yeah, what is, what's your perspective on the whole thing? I am all for it if it works out. I've done some partnerships within mm -hmm. bigger brands and everything's great on paper. Everyone yeah. gets really excited beforehand. And then it doesn't fucking happen. And it's so frustrating. It's, you know, because you can see it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And you're doing everything to try and prop it up. And if there's just no partner, if there's no one on the other side, then yeah. it just falls flat. What doesn't work about it, do you think? Is it like the, oh, so um, you're basically, laziness. you're asking people, <laughs> hey, you need to oh. post us. There's, a, there's commitments around posting. They just don't meet that. Oh, or no. What? That, that was, sorry. I was giving more of an, uh, a to do with a, a, a partnership. Yeah. Uh, so corporate thing yeah, sorry yeah. with brands like it, with uh, influencers and stuff like that um i think it just depends on who they are how many numbers they have mm -hmm. how valuable they might be and also one thing i always want to know is like what do you want to do yeah like mm -hmm. the last thing you want to hear from as a creative is 
oh, this is what you have to do. It's yeah. just, you know, oh, yeah, you want to come to Silverstar? Why? You know, what do you want to do with it? What are your thoughts? Because imagine if they came along and they said, look, actually having this idea, I really want to do this idea for a three-part, you know, web series and whatever, and this is the concept, and I've got this person, yeah. this person, this person, mm-hmm. and we can make it this big. So it actually might work out well. Some people might just come for a day and do a post and that sort of thing, and that yeah. might be okay as well. But, yeah, so it just depends. I mean, you gave Sophie Monk the credit for the idea behind the uh, yeah. recruitment yeah. video, but I think definitely the – you should give yourself more credit. You've had some amazing ideas come to life. Do you think that radio was where you learnt those uh, idea sensibilities? I think that radio helped me believe, I like to think of an idea and to execute it. Mm. That's the, that's the only thing that's stopping people from not doing what they're doing is the execution yeah. part. And you're in such a, you know what it's like. There's a billion things happening and you've got to yeah you've got to just con- constantly sort of go with it so you've, you're forced to think of an idea and and to be honest it's also about good teams you know I think we were quite fortunate mm. in the teams that we had to work with in being able to do things and then you know then later I was working with Colin Jack and I'd go hey I've got this idea and it wasn't met with oh you know you, you shouldn't do that or you mm. can't do that it was yeah, yeah no worries we'll just go do it you know, just it, it, it wasn't an issue. How much money do you need for it? Oh, I think, you know, one time we gave away $10,000. Yep, no worries. Well, let's do it. You know, if, it, if it's going to help out and, and whatever it might be. So that creative, that, that environment allows you to go, okay, let's think of anything possible. What would be really good and why would it be good and who are the people we're trying to target? And then, yeah. And you have some, you know, a lot of wins and there's a couple of clangers in there as well. I remember mm. once we decided to do a – I don't know whose idea it was, but we it certainly wasn't the best uh, idea – was we had a guy propose to his girlfriend in a port loo Oh, great. <laughs> not Was clever. it integration not with Ken, uh, Kenny? <laughs> Kennard's hired? Or no, Ken, no, Kenny, oh, Kenny the your, movie. your mate, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it was just a shit idea. <laughs> <laughs> shit idea? Yeah. Um, the, the the radio stuff, the, the content – the, the content part of it, where do you, like being zoomed out a bit, where do you think that radio could potentially go? With the shows on air? Yeah, or like, like the future of all of this stuff. In, in, you know, five years, ten years' time, do you have an insight being out of radio now of where you think it will go? Um, I think it will, it's just wherever the money is. Yeah. So I think if they're able to still create these great shows and mm. have really talented people, do, you know, and they have the sales team behind it and they've got the ability to market, then I think it'll be around for a while. It just will change naturally. You know, you start to – and their deals will start to change. So mm. say, for instance, you know, back in the day, a client comes in, um, you've got to think of these ideas. I think mm. a lot will be tied – a lot of the digital will be tied to a lot of the talent, I think, from now on in. Mm. Well, so, it's the scale of their business is their asset or liability, like yeah. them not being able to – I mean, we, f- we felt it in some st- – times where there was no support and you're in a big business. I always felt like when I got to those m- major markets, I was like, fuck, I thought this would be different. I think, <laughs> pri- yeah. think prioritisation as well, right? So yeah. they're prioritising, you've got like the on-air talent and all that sort of and you've got the that sort of idea that it, all that matters is what's through the speakers and coming from that sort of yeah. school of thought. I will I will say I think there has to be some shift. And I, I know there's, there's only a handful of talent that are still at the top but they have to be willing to play ball with you have to be digitally friendly team. you have to be yeah, on social media but you know what it. anyone that's right at the top of the talent field they know that and they're really smart and they yeah. they get their value and what their value is to big business and mm. you know they can understand how to connect the two yeah. probably better than anyone else i'm talking even you know eps and yeah. you know other management and stuff like that so mm. i think they they're across that part of it yeah. have you seen yourself as a um, i guess talent's not the right word for any of us it's like a creator i know that you're a your content creator, but in terms of like your rise of your social personal media, brand, your personal brand, like mm. being associated with Sophie and doing the great work you do. Have you ever, like, do you see that as a thing or is it or like- Or the current affair gear. <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> like, yeah. I mean, well, I've actually got another one up my back pocket with Trace. <laughs> hey, Trace. Um, no, you know what? I just, it's so funny because I look at a lot of my, f- some of my friends who are influencers on a different level to, mm. so, you know, so, so, so you know, uh, media personality yeah. and she's obviously aligned with nine and all that sort of stuff so yeah. Yeah, it's sort of different 
that versus the influencer side. But you see all these influencers and they, they create content and they go to these things and oh, I can't be fucked doing all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Like I, my fear is to have to go into a room and have to talk to a lot of people that I don't know, don't care about. And it, I, and then I'm trying to take a photo to show people that I'm there. It doesn't <laughs> do it for me. I would rather like take a photo of my car, which just got stolen yeah. and try and hunt <laughs> it down that way. You know what I mean? Like I don't think I, I've got the energy. I'd rather focus my energy on doing something for another brand or yeah. yeah. Or if it's a good idea, if yeah. it's a fine idea. Yeah. I, I think it actually ends up happening that you become the influencer that way. Like I think it does where the focus isn't on, I want to be, you know, front mm. and center at the parties. Yeah. I think that you just, I don't know. I just can't be bothered. I think it's – and I want to be as authentic as possible yeah, yeah. on your social – and, like, sometimes I'll do stuff for work because it's what I'm working on. But, yeah, then I'm like, oh, maybe I should post because I, th- people don't know where I live, yeah, yeah. you know. It's just yeah. even that, those <laughs> sorts of things. So, I don't know. I just sort of go, oh, do I like it? Yeah. What's That's your relationship with pitching ideas? So – for instance, like I saw you in, were you in Italy with Soph doing yeah. a, a TV thing? How does how does that happen? Oh, what, what, what was that? Just quickly, because I don't have a TV. I so we filmed a special. Mm-hmm. So Soph and I have a production company which we started about a year or so ago yeah. called Lazy Susan. <laughs> um, she thought of the idea. That was one of hers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we, which is funny because our production company is Lazy Susan. And then you think about it, one of the biggest or best you know, production companies, Working Dog. So you've got Working Dog. <laughs> you know their philosophies and they've got Lazy Susan over there. It's like, did you get around to anything, guys? Oh, no, no, we're working on stuff. It's so funny. Um, so we did a special for Nine, Sophie and I, are in it and produced it and we're just uh, looking at recutting a few bits and pieces. But uh, Has it come out yet? Nah. Okay. And so what is what was the actual process or no the process process. of like how do you fucking like how do you pitch for things how do you communicate how do you uh, it sounds like with re-editing and stuff there's sort of like stakeholder management and all that sort of shit there's just no set way at all Mm -hmm. and i can tell you the way that it happened for us is not the way that it would happen for many other people it just depends on the situation and your value Mm -hmm. and their priorities and understanding their priorities and um yeah so uh I don't – the process, it was very much centred around Sophie, obviously, yeah. because she just got off the Bachelorette. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, that was just something – a passion project that we'd want to work on for, for a while. Um, and, and you got then, to yeah, go to Europe. Like free holiday to Italy <laughs> was That's so amazing. good. And so have you got uh, ideas in the pipeline for Lazy Susan? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's like – it's the same thing. Like we, w- we want it to work for the both of us. We're both very fortunate and we've got separate things. Mm. So it's more of a passion pro- – you know, it's always centred around passion. So even if like – because, you know, naturally I'm talking to different brands all the time, mm. you know, it, there might not be something that we can work with there. But, oh, I've got, an idea, I've got this idea that I wanted to work on. I'd love to pitch to you to see if you think it might work and then that might work in that space. Mm. And how do you put together – like are you – fully writing out the idea how the video looks depends on who they are and and what materials i've got and what the idea is but sometimes i'll go in how i used to do it in radio is i just used to think visually about very you know visual i'd think about what how the idea might play out i'd write a little one page or whatever and i'd send it through and then it just got to a stage where i went oh hey i've got this idea i've got this Mm. idea and then you just sort of you go away with it with businesses it just depends on the type of people they are if they're quite risk adverse they might want that time Mm. they want to see all the dots and it's frustrating for me because i'm just like Oh, yes or no? It's fine if it's not going to happen. You just let me know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've just got to be respectful. I think that's part of the process when you're working with someone is to work out wh- how it is that they want to work and because you want it to be valuable. You mm. know, the last thing you want to do is for it to not succeed. Yeah. What's your relationship with social media? Um, it's very strong. <laughs> it's the only re- relationship I've got in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Do you, um, think that the, it's, do you think it's overstated at the moment, the sort of – the mental health stuff and the the negativity of social media. Do you think it's understated or um, overstated? I think that I don't know. I just think it is what it is. Like mm. I see people that promote mental health with mm. it, and I get it. Like yeah. imagine mm. when you're growing up, having to because you know obviously Facetune and you mm. know people are half nude all the time, and and I suppose it was like that for us in a different form with magazines or whatever yeah. whatever generation it was. So mm. it's always there. The generation above is always coming through the ranks and they're always, um, you know, there's always an issue with the younger generation coming through and, mm. worry, and worrying about them. And you know what? I think that it's like, like bullying happens regardless. It's just yeah. what medium that it comes to you at. And I don't know. I've, I'm not. So you're not a screen time guy. You're not like managing how much time you're spending on your phone or anything No, like nah, no, nah, no. Nah, we should just have a quick check. 
Yeah. Well, Definitely. do you know what? This is a brand new find, so it'll be uh, interesting to see. What happened to your last one? <laughs> oh, it, well, that's the ACA through. story. That it was in the car. It was in the car. <laughs> do you know what? This is my second replacement. Is it an iPhone Seven, 7 plus? plus? Why yeah. is it a replacement? What do you? They do? did that. They replaced mine last week too. My uh, speakers went. Yeah, um, mine. I couldn't call, and I was like, "That's the only thing you need to do." <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's people who just put up with this stuff, and then there's people like us that are always looking. I'm looking for a replacement. I've gone in twice. How good is it though? Because you've got a new. Ba- so you've got what's that? Ca- uh, oh, this, this is, is so good because I've only literally just got it as of yesterday. So my screen time, just so, so you know, everyone, I only like to do an hour and fifty minutes a day. Okay. I'm What's the breakdown on that? Is that actually an hour and fifty five minutes is social networking? Are you going to be what, in trouble from the boss? Your boss watching, thinking Skype. Uh, you love Skype. Oh, I'm so glad this is not what it was normally. Wow. No, well, it doesn't show you websites. Grindr. It won't show you. Um, <laughs> that's not matter. That's good. Okay, so yes, yeah, Skype a lot because I'm. You, fine, d- you know, did Canada. get a bit nervous. You know, people get real funny with their phone. Well, but also you're like, oh no, don't get your phone. Yeah. There is, there I just is say be that. careful. It's mm. use at your own risk. You know when you have to give your phone back after you've used it at work? Oh, no, nah, you're going through the photos wipe. and I'm like, what <laughs> screenshots do I have? Dude, I was on a plane the other day looking and I could see a guy sitting in the aisle seat, but he was kind of a couple in, it was sp- vacant. So I had line of sight to his laptop and he's just going through his photos on his <laughs> computer. <laughs> he just got to dick shots and it, yeah. was, and it was him. Oh, and you saw it. And oh, it was like, him, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. How <laughs> filled the whole script like there was that many that he took that it was. I, I actually once. Is this you? <laughs> is this one a, of these stories? Where they go, oh, I was. A, I a saw friend. someone once. I opened up my phone in front of a girl and I had her Instagram open as I've opened it up. I was like next to her. She was like I knew her. We weren't dating. <laughs> but Did you call it out? No, I fucking got out of it and she ignored it. It's one of those awkward ones where you know they're ignoring worse. it, but mm. stalking happens. Yeah. You know, it just does. So I just got yeah, stalking. Yeah. And your shit, <laughs> by the way. You need to really ramp up your... No. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I love social media. I think it's really yeah. good. And But you do get tired of it. Like sometimes you go through Instagram. And I've got friends who have to get rid of the app for a little bit because it actually affects them. Yeah. I I, that's I'm on that. You. That's me. I think but at the moment with the daily talk show, I've been managing that. And yeah. so my use time, like I could spend five hours on it Does in a it, day. Do you yeah. think it's maybe because it feels like it's a bit inconspicuous, like who's on there? But also progress. I feel like there's progress when you're doing stuff, especially with the daily talk show. I feel like when I like something, it's like it's 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 also visibility. Like I've, I've, told, this, I've told this story yeah. to myself around like oh, me interacting and consuming content yeah. is also there good is the a show. different feeling for your own personal branded Instagram mm. versus a page. Like yeah. how many how many Instagram accounts do you have? For myself. Oh, no, just for for like with all the business involved. stuff. Yeah. Do you look well, like the silver I've star? Got, yeah, the yeah. silver star. I've got that and I've got um like I remember when you were looking after a bunch oh, of the radio stations. Like yeah, so many. Yeah, yeah. yeah and no, Instagram used to be so Oh I've actually bad. got that and I've also got my my dog Humphrey. Okay, how many how many followers is Humphrey? Got well, I now? stopped posting on Humphreys because he started beating me, and I thought, "Fuck you! You he's don't do anything, yeah. and I'm doing all your content, and you're getting a bit of me." So he's one thousand two hundred forty-one. What yeah. happens with Humphrey, Humphrey the lab? What, at Humphrey the lab. What happens with Humphrey when you go away? Uh, so a friend, a really good friend of mine, Connor, who runs Dogs of Melbourne, she looks after him. Is that an Instagram together, account? And that's Dogs an Instagram. Yeah, it's an it's in, an Instagram account, and it's also. Uh, a dog walking, dog minding all around Melbourne. So I've got the best person to possibly look after my dog. She, you know, he goes on adventures every day and all. And, and I get all these photos coming through from me when I was in Canada. It's awesome. <laughs> do they, um, did Humphrey get a bit uh, annoyed at you? Nah, doesn't care. He's doesn't so, care? Oh, you're back, yeah. You know, doesn't, doesn't care <laughs> all right, If it was a staffy, you'd be anxious and... Oh, staffy. Yeah, they, they're very anxious. What so, if, yeah. What well, if you... Oh, um, it's, it's Tom oh, Davidson. Yeah, mate, we're just now looking at um, <laughs> it's, that looks so incriminating. I've got to say, yeah, yeah. this just popped up on my phone. Yeah. I know you can't say yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a friend, a mutual friend. Yeah, Tommy D, and uh, he's topless doing some model, modeling yeah. stuff. And it just looks like I'm staring at. It has you know. it has that vibe. What if you learnt from? <laughs> Don't uh, go to the. You know when you go to the explore feed and it's all obviously all the content that you resonate with with the most. It's your brain. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like going into my now. Oh, there's a lot of uh, male fitness. Uh, yeah, you just yeah, because I'm fit. very fit. Tattoos. There's lots of of um, dogs, lots of dogs, puppies and snow. And yeah. Um, oh yeah, it's weird. There's a few. Um, it is funny. It's like um, your YouTube search. I reckon YouTube search probably says a bit more about everybody yeah. in terms of like, yeah. your, you know, your discover page, your homepage. Yeah. Right? I spend so, do you spend much, spend much time on YouTube? 
I just, like yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Do you have it on? Because I have it on my TV. Like it's my number one app on uh, my TV and stuff. Yeah, you don't get yeah. into that? Yeah, occasionally. My yeah. housemate will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I what? don't set like a time of going, oh, I've got, I can't wait to go home. And okay. Well, well I, I'm doing <laughs> a bit of that. What have you learned from <laughs> hanging out with and working with Sophie? What have I learned? Yeah. Oh, good question. Um, she's got a great ability to be fearless mm. and it's a mm. really good uh, – uh, and just to be nice and have fun. Mm. Where does it come from? For her, have yeah, fun? Yeah, where do you think the fearlessness comes from? I think it comes from that when she's been fearless in the past, it's, it's paid off. Mm, okay. And also when you feel, you know, that sense of vulnerability as mm. well. Like everyone wants to try and be this certain image. And that's when I sort of thought about it, like when the car got stolen, I thought, oh, fuck it, I'm just going to put it up on social media because do I look like I'm, does it look reckless? Yes. Does it look like I can't get to my <laughs> shit together? Yes. Does it look like oh, another, you know, but I thought it's true. <laughs> yeah. And just be, and you know, you've got to be, and she's very that as well. You know, she's very, that's one thing I probably learned a lot from her. So she, um, I think she learned a lot from LA because she spent 10 years there and you can imagine, you know, being blonde and walking in mm. to casting agents who say, no, 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 no. And it's because of this look, this look, this look, like it can obviously affect you. So I think her motto, yeah, is just very much to, to be happy. And, 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 you know, she's got a mum and a dad that she looks after on her property, mm. you know, in, on the Gold Coast, like she's got a house for them that she's set up with. So mm. yeah, she's done really well. What about um, Jules Lund, your cousin? Yes. He, he's, He's taught me a lot. What yeah. It, I mean, he's a great person to have I- in your life if mm. you're wanting to get into – I guess he's, you know, mindset, self-development, but also career. He's very career-driven. Yeah. What, I know he used to make you film him yeah. in the early days before he was a B-lister. So what we would do <laughs> – Such an arsehole. No, so what <laughs> we would then, do – Now he's a de- – no. <laughs> he said it on the show yeah, he himself. Did, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah we, uh, did he mention this? No, no, no. no, 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 no. He um, mentioned so he, his status. Yeah, so he used to pay me, and he, th- he actually paid me quite well. This is I was still in school to write thirty second, sixty second scripts, yeah. like he was doing pieces to camera. And so it started off with him in his bedroom, where I wasn't even allowed to go into his bedroom. I'd set the camera up on the tripod and close the door, and I was out talking to his mum, my auntie, uh, my auntie, um, while he did his thing. And then he's like, "Okay, yep, I'm I'm ready." And then it, so it started from there, and he just grew his confidence to being able to talk on. And so we'd have him down uh, on Chapel Street and I'd get him to jump up on a garbage bin and have to do a piece to camera to, my, you know, those big cameras back then yeah. with people walking by and keeping focus and I'd only just, you know, show him the script a little bit so he's forced to just do it off the top of his head. But that yeah. actually prepared him to go and do uh, an audition at Channel 9 yeah. and, you know, next minute he's doing Getaway. What, what were you like in school? Me? Yeah. Um... Like a media kid, if you're oh, using yeah, yeah, cameras yeah. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I always, and I knew it wasn't the cool thing to do, but I did not care. Yeah, yeah. you know, we had um, at I went to school at Xavier, and they had a I couldn't believe it because I, I went in there in year ten, and one thing that I loved about it is I walked through and they had an actual TV studio there with cameras, Amazing. and no one's using them, and I was like, this is incredible. Mm. So I really want to do that. So in order to do that, part of school sport. You, you basically got to choose if you wanted to do swimming or footy or basketball. Hey, basketball would be great for Oscar, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, and I chose AV, audio visual, which, <laughs> which was going and getting a camera and going and filming the people who were playing sports. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, that's a fucking boring job um, doing that. But it was good because it just gave me those basic skills. And we created a TV show that we made the school watch once a week or to yeah. once every twice a week. But it was actually a really good experience and, and helped. I mean, with school skills to, um, you know, do what I'm doing now. Do you think it's cool now? Like, I know it is more cool to be a filmmaker. Everyone right? wants to be a YouTuber. All the kids well, want yeah. to be yeah, YouTubers. Yeah, that's a good do you think these media rooms, I mean, your mum used to work at Xavier. Do you think they're being utilised now by all these kids? Well, the funny thing is, is now you don't need a TV studio yeah. and you yeah. don't need to use that giant camera yeah. that they've got there in the studio and the mixing desk and all. I mean, that's all good experience to learn if you want to get into actual TV TV. Mm. Yeah. But you can see these stars. I mean, you've had them on your show that just use the mobile phone mm. and, and just, yeah, yeah. and it's they're a, able to do it. It's an interesting conversation, the, you know, the, the type of camera that you should use. And I feel like I was very much in my early days. It doesn't matter what you got. You just got to use what you have. And then, the later thought like where we're at now is we offer a high production service that's expensive and high quality and needs to meet all these you know different um, uh, factors but are the factors 
what size and scale? Well, it's more um, what type of what, – what's the brand? What's their aesthetic? Are they mm. a premium product? They can't be seen to be using an iPhone mm. for this kind of thing. So we – for what we do, we can offer a high-end production service, which – doesn't mean that this isn't good to film on your phone, but it's just a different model. And so when I hear – I've had two people this week say, oh, look, you know, businesses don't care what um, cameras Mm -hmm. you use, but that's actually just where they're at and their story. Well, the story at at the beginning, it's it's like uh, content is king. And if you've got a shit – if you don't have – it's like with using the example with the Jules stuff. If he doesn't have the input, if he doesn't have that original bit of script or something to work Mm -hmm. off or something to talk about, it's really fucking hard. You can buy – a podcast, mm. you know, set up really mm. inexpensively. Yeah, great talent will shine on shit quality production. Yeah, and so that's the thing is it's like you want to uh, – the the barrier to entry shouldn't be the camera that you're using. Uh, having, mm. a, having an iPhone is perfectly fine to start making YouTube videos. It shouldn't be the excuse. But then there is a point where it's like yeah. – You've got this content thing sorted. Let's match it up with like. Well, I feel like working closely with you, Oscar. I've I've seen that it wasn't really a thought. Like I, you've always been idea led first. Yeah, idea first. (laughs) What are you? Are you still thinking like that? Yes, but it depends on what what it is that you're doing. So if you're doing a branding piece for a brand, that's going to be shiny. It's going to that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to engage people (laughs) in the content that's there though. Mm. It all depends on the content. So you can have something that's really shiny. And I get there's a place for it. So say, for instance, a company comes along and says, hey, we want to show 60 seconds of the best of a ski resort. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find the best content, but I'm going to make it look really high, you know, a certain level of quality to it. So certain cameras, certain um, photographers, whoever it is that we've worked with, because the point of that is they're going to play it and they're going to display it in a a whole room full of people. But if you want content to do well on digital, then I'd rethink the whole, I'd rethink the whole thing. Like say for instance, it was the ski resort wants to yeah, create um, a brand awareness with their competitors, with whoever it is, then I would go out and think of what the idea might be and then what would complement that. And, you know, for, you've got to remember a lot of people when they're going through their, uh, they're scrolling through their feeds is they're used to seeing um, quality, uh, you know, phone quality mm. and they're almost instinctively more engaged with that quality. Mm. Um, similarly, we did a video the other day where I used high-end quality video but I formatted it so that it was in that longer social media friendly format yeah. which is higher in, engaging so it just depends on the idea well you don't is. you don't want it to look like a tv commercial no. because then people know yeah. it's being sold to i think that's where people end up parodying um these formats where it's like oh i need to make it look like a tv commercial so people will uh, think it's more legitimate but really you can tell the difference between when you're flicking through, say, Instagram stories. Mm. When it goes to an ad and it's produced and all that sort of thing, it mm. straight away loses. I just flick straight through versus if it actually feels totally. like it's in your feed and it's organic and it's part of the, the whole platform, it's, mm. it's different. And then it depends. Like, are we doing an ad? Are we actually going, you know what, we're doing an ad or are we going to try and do some content and do organic native sort mm. of th- – and, and I love that style. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's that's my favourite thing to do, really. And then – but there are opportunities to to do bigger things. And it's – yeah, it's good, though, because you've got constantly – and particularly with all this social media that changes, you know, you can now do a certain length of story on your Instagram. You can now do Instagram TV, but you mm. can only do it if it's certain size yeah. and all that sort of shit. But you just – I think if you, you keep doing it and you keep involving yourself in it and you keep an eye on it, then, mm. then yeah, you, you have a better understanding of what – yeah. So – so when do you uh, leave to go back to Canada? When does it probably that won't be for until the end of the year. Uh-huh. But and I might, yeah. And the living arrangement, like, do you live at the resort? Yeah, I stay in a hotel. It's one of the skiing ski yet. Like you can. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's. A whole I've village. never done the skiing oh, thing before. To go. I feel like I would fuck my back real bad. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Uh, definitely. Well, well, you heard like the F1 not even skiing. He jumped yeah. into snow. <laughs> <laughs> is it like how many injury? I know that's probably not great. PR, oh, no, but do a lot of people fuck themselves? Well, yeah, if they're silly, on yeah. it, then absolutely. Yeah. But um, it's 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 a pretty incredible thing to do, and you know, it, it sometimes can be seen as like a very privileged sport because it costs yeah. a lot of money to do it. Yeah. But there are ways that you can do it, and you, even Silver Star, it's actually it turns out to be a lot more 
cheaper to go over to Silver Star, mm. stay at the accommodation, which is right next to the ski runs, mm. have the skiing, which is better quality, more snow, less people on the runs, less wait times, and have a cheaper holiday than going to a local Australian. Where resort. do we book? Where do we book? <laughs> ski <laughs> Silver Star. <laughs> oh. No, but you know, that, but that is the truth, and that's mm. with a lot of Canadian, and t- particularly on the dollar. But um, yeah, so I stay. Yeah, there's a hotel there. It's called Snowbird, and I stay in one of the. <laughs> so is it yeah, with like really other people it. who? <laughs> you really worked. Is there anyone else that you're <laughs> working with that's <laughs> on like the same floor? Like, do you have like an employee? floor type of thing or you're just amongst I oh, know I'm, I'm the exception to Is the rule <laughs> <laughs> always has been always will uh, yeah, Oscar, I love that yeah mate thanks for being on the show it'd be <laughs> we're, we're eventually going if I can do a bit of a world tour maybe 2020 that'd be we'll great come, yeah, come we'll, uh, we'll come and, and do, take you up on the free skiing yeah. and maybe I'll uh, get a back brace or something in preparation <laughs> is there any um, sort of desire to make the production company more of the full time thing outside of only if the opportunity allowed us to. I mean, yeah. I, I think we're both pretty uh, relaxed with it all. Mm-hmm. It's like let's let a good idea happen. We've been lucky with the video stuff we've done in the past. Let's not just turn it into something where we have to employ, we have to do this and it becomes a labour. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just want to do it, work, just the merit of the idea of the – whatever it is that we're working on. Yeah. yeah, I love it. It's probably, that's how it will happen for you. Yeah, thanks for approach. coming on, mate. It's Thank a Daily you so Talk much. Show. Hi at the dailytalkshow.com is our email address. And we, we answer emails and stuff when we don't have guests because otherwise it's just a bit admin heavy. It's boring for you. Yeah, so <laughs> Daily Talk Show. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you guys.